name is Vanessa van Dam. I'm a graphic designer. I live and work in Amsterdam. And right now we're in the Hermitage, not in my studio, uh, because I showed the exhibition and I brought some work. Well, why I became a graphic designer is, uh, well, my parents are both uh, studied at the Rietveld Academy, where I also ended up studying. And my father used to be a graphic designer, but later on he was more like a, a, an artist. Um, but when I was in high school, I went to this office in Rotterdam, which is called Hardwerken, which was in the 80s a pretty well-known graphic design office. And um, a friend of my father was one of the owners and he showed me around and I was like 18 years old. And this was really the moment that I saw, thought, this is it. I love it. Like the, the posters they made and the way the office was and all the things that he showed me. And then I knew for sure that I wanted to become a graphic designer. And I uh, went to the Rietveld Academy, which was also really amazing. I had a great time. Um, met a lot of people that I'm, I'm still connected with and um, had some fantastic teachers. And after the academy, I immediately started for myself because I knew um, that I absolutely didn't want to work for an office because I did an internship with uh, Anton Beke, um, who passed away a couple of years ago. But then I could really see how it was to work on an, in an office and I really didn't like it. <laughs> Because uh, all the designers were working so hard and at, at the end it was his name on the poster or in a book. And yeah, I thought, no, I just want to make my own decisions. And not that someone else is deciding like, it has to be this typeface or it has to be yellow instead of blue. So I, st I started for myself and luckily enough, I from one assignment, I did get another one and another one and another one. And yeah, and then your network is starting to grow. And um, somehow I ended up working in the cultural sector. So I did a lot of things for yeah, photographers, architects, museums, um, writers. So, and yeah, till now, and I, I still love it. Yeah, I remember one moment very clearly. It was for a cultural institute in a small village in the Netherlands, in Hilversum. And they, it was a super interesting institute because they worked with very interesting upcoming artists. Uh, and I just graduated from uh, the academy. And at that moment, I knew that they really had like a small amount of money, like even like nothing. And I was a bit in doubt, like, oh, shall I do it? Because this is not professional. If I do it, then I'm, I, they don't pay me very well. But afterwards, this assignment was for me like a changing point uh, because so many people had seen the corporate identity that I designed for this place and like the invitations and the posters. And because of this assignment, many other clients came to me and asked if I wanted to work for them. So that was really like a special thing. And another important moment was that um, here in the Netherlands, maybe also in Germany and other countries, there used to um, come, uh, people go to the exams of the academies and they're going to visit it and to see like what kind of work everybody makes. And these can also be very important clients. And there was one person, the husband of Irma Boom, uh, Julius Vermeulen. And he worked at that time, he was the head of the design for the Dutch stamps and the Dutch. In that time, you still had like phone cards because it was before the cell phone time. Um, so you, it was very uh, a prestige um, assignment to design stamps or design these phone cards. And he visited my exam at the Rietveld Academy and then he asked me if I wanted to design these phone cards first. And then a year later or two years later he asked me if I would like to design stamps, which was really amazing. And I was only like, I don't know, 27 years old. And then a couple of years ago, he asked me again to design stamps. So that was like fantastic if you just graduated and someone is like visiting. And so these were important moments. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 
Yeah, because then I was already a bit critical about my about myself about the first design and your your more um, how do you say experience with typography etc. So yeah. Well, the biggest challenge was that um, I had to deal with the fact that they were working with four themes within this main theme, love stories. Um, and I thought, because I had seen the pictures from the exhibition in the United States, and I thought it was a bit boring to have just like placing all these images in the correct theme, because I thought, yeah, when it's in, in the real life, love is also not about placing it in all these boxes, because if you are somebody's muse, maybe you're also married to somebody, or maybe you have a scandal in your relationship, and at the same time, um, you're each other uh, literary lovers. So what, that's why I decided, I, I chose four colors for every theme. So in the little cabinets, you have like the introduction on the themes. But then here in the main hall, I thought it would be very interesting to mix the themes. And I did so by just literally crossing the walls. So for example, portraying partnership crosses love against the odds. So the colors are mixing, the themes are connected. And, but that was the biggest challenge, and also then to arrange and decide which painting would be where, because yeah, some paintings, the, the National Portrait Gallery, they said like they really have to be next to each other. Other paintings, I had more freedom where to place them, but that was like a really big challenge to make it an interesting exhibition. I was pretty free. I mean, the Hermitage always gives me a lot of freedom, um, and they were very open to it. So I was also like happily surprised, and I had to present the the whole design for the National Portrait Gallery through Zoom, so it was all digital. And in the beginning, they really had to be like, okay, they had to think about it a bit about the colors, but also they were really convinced about it. So it wasn't a big discussion. And I made like tests and they also were uh, yeah, aware of the fact that it was really helpful that the colors are poppy and, and it also works out really good with the painters, which I was surprised a bit because you could imagine that maybe it would work only with like a grey or a white background, but yeah. The next exhibition that I'm, uh, I'm working on is also here in the Hermitage, but then I will be doing only the graphic design in the exhibition and the catalog, which is really nice. Um, and it will be about Dutch masters from a, a collection of a very famous rich person, in a collector in New York. Um, but I did do previous exhibitions in the Hermitage as well. I mean, only the, the graphic design and also sometimes the catalog. And this was the first time that I um, did, was responsible for the whole three-dimensional design of the whole exhibition, which was super exciting, but also a bit, um, yeah, it was completely new for me because I was also responsible for all the budgets. So I really had to make sure that the builders, I, I need to know the price of the wood, if everything was possible, the paints, all the things, and it was in a very short time because I did get the assignment at the end of May and the exhibition was opening half September, so that was really hard working. Yeah, that was really um, interesting to do because the people from the National Portrait Gallery, they of course had some themes and so some works they uh, told me in advance, okay, these need to be in the same theme or they need to hang together. But within the, the themes, I was I still had freedom, and then it was really like sketching on your computer and in SketchUp, like placing paintings left from the other one or from the right, and it's really about making a nice composition. It's like designing a book, but then you know that it will be on the wall, and of course I, I had to ask for all the me exact measurements because you also have to make sure that it fits on the wall it fits together and that this is something that has to be very super precise because sometimes they gave the measurements of the photo or the painting but then you have to realize ah, but there's also like a frame around it and what is the size. Yeah, 
so first I started just in InDesign, just like in a 2D model, like if you're designing a book, like placing the images next to each other um, and making this composition. And then I worked together, I asked help from someone who's really good into SketchUp and he was making this three-dimensional model and then we were doing exactly the same like ah maybe this painting is nice or if it's around the corner and then also because of these crossing walls it was also very interesting to see which images would be in front of another one which you can't really see if you do it in any sign so then in this 3d model we could see how they were like yeah in a way looking at each other so that was super interesting to do and in the end like moving paintings to other corners in the exhibition and then if, of course every time we had to ask permission from the uh, national portrait gallery like is is it allowed or yeah and they were also like the client from england they, they were very surprised about it because then they only knew this exhibition it was never in england because it's a collection from england but it wasn't as this love stories exhibition only in the united states so for them it was also completely new to see it in this composition and like what you say, the, the paintings interfering with each other and uh, so they were also like surprised. Mm. Typography wise, um, to be very honest, I would have preferred to not have the themes on the walls because I thought it would have been so strong if it's really like the colors, that if you in the beginning see, okay, brown is love against the odds, and pink is portrait partnership, and then you have it combined. But I also understand from the point of view from the museum that they said, yeah, but the visitors would like to know all the themes. Um, so, well, okay, the topography is on the wall, and I've chosen for the typeface uh, life, because it, I I really think it's a beautiful uh, and lovely uh, typeface. It's warm. It's warm. And I like that it's uh, serif. And for the typo typography of the posters and the, the smaller text uh, posters, I my idea behind it was that if it would be as if you would receive, if, as if you have a love letter and you fold it into, and if you open it, you have in the center, you have this shadow and it gives a sort of gradient. So for every theme, it has its own colors, also like the pink, the blue, the red, and the brownish. But then, of course, the background is lighter because otherwise the text is not readable. No. But that's the idea behind it. Yeah, you have a couple of different, of course you have like a couple of academies in the Netherlands and some of them have the name like, okay, if you really want to uh, study fashion design, for example, you go to R&M, which is a really good department. And graphic design, it's also like R&M and it was the, or still is, the Rietvat Academy. So, but also other academies, it, it really depends also on uh, which teachers are there in this kind of, in, the, in a period. certain period. Um, and I really wanted, because I'm born and raised in Amsterdam, so for me it was also like simple to study in, in Amsterdam. But I also really wanted to go to the Rietveld Academy because it's, yeah, it has a name and it's quite famous and... Um, but you, you also have other uh, good academies in the Netherlands. It, it just depends on what, on, in what department you would like to study. Yeah, exactly. Although, and it's changing, like I said, so nowadays I think it's also really good if you're interested in typography to go to, to the Rietveld. And you have this great, this, this uh, master um, um, at academies, like the post, like what right. you do after the academy, like Werkplatz Typografie, wow. that was founded by Karel Martens. And you also have uh, um, a second thing that you can do in The Hague. So this is also a way to continue studying. I think the Rietveld is really like in artistic thinking, but also super conceptual. But you also have academies that are focused more on like painting or um, just so, so like artistic more in that direction.
Yeah, it's mainly like I would say printed stuff. Mm. Um, but now the, the last couple of years it's also more into the direction of exhibition but then like the graphic design in an exhibition which is of course a different way of designing because then you really have to think of okay the routing how people are working walking um, is something still um, readable when there's a group of people in front of you so it's a total different way of thinking if you compare it with a book that you have in your hand and it's another kind of concentration. I really, really uh, uh, like it a lot and, I'm, and besides the Hermitage I, I also work for other museums so this, it's not that I'm only working for them. But what I really like the most is the combination so that um, you're working on a book and at the same time at an exhibition and on a corporate identity and on a website. So I like the combination of these different designs and the different ways of thinking. Uh, but it's also super good to, to work on a book and think about, yeah, and that you, you call with a printer and you talk about the colors and you have to think about, yeah, the super precise typography and and this is something that I didn't learn at all at the academy. So this is something that you have to learn by doing. And, uh, and also like the first time that I did an exhibition, you, and still I do it, but you have to test before on real size. Like, is, does this size of typography, does it work? And then when you bring it to a museum, all of, all of, all of a sudden you think like, ah, size 100 is way too small. It needs to be, I don't know, 400. And, so it's also about testing and readability and uh, yeah, it's completely different. Pooh. Yeah. Wow. To be honest, I never think about that, the legacy I would like to leave. Yeah, well, make beautiful things. That's, that would be wow. important for me. Wow. But I think there are other designers where it's, that you can talk more about a legacy like Wim Krawo or uh, Anton Beke that I mentioned or Karel Martens, like these I Dutch icons. And